In the workshop, making a lathe spindle thread protector. Recently, I set up this ER40 collet system on my Boxford lathe. And although nothing to do with this video, this is the new ring that I bought for it. It's a ball raised collet ring, which allows you to put more pressure on the collets and hold them very securely in the chuck. In this clip, I'm taking a measurement of the diameter of the spindle because I want to make a protector for this spindle nose. Normally this spindle nose has a three or four jaw chuck screwed onto it, but now it's very vulnerable. And that's why I'm going to make a protector for it. The first thing to do is to fit an O-ring. And here I'm taking a measurement of the outside diameter of the O-ring once it's fitted to the spindle. And then it's over to my other lathe, and it's quite good that I have two lathes, because otherwise I would have to mess about fitting the three jaw chuck onto the boxwood. But I don't have to do that because I have a perfectly good self-centering four jaw chuck in the large of my two lathes. I found this piece of metal in my scrap bin. I don't know what it's from. It came with a bundle of random pieces of metal. I think it's some kind of bearing. I have no use for it as a bearing because I don't know what it fits. So I'm going to use this and turn it down to make the spindle nose protector. This piece of metal is some kind of bronze and it's cutting beautifully. It's a really high grade piece of metal. It has a thread on each end of it, which I'm turning away. Maybe that was used to hold an oil seal in its intended application. And in this clip, you can see that there's an oil hole right in the middle of it. I don't need an oil hole in this spindle protector, but if I use this as an indicator as to where the spindle lock engages, then it will be useful. Let me explain. On a lathe, a spindle lock is a button that you press and it locks the spindle in position making it very easy to fit and remove chucks to the lathe spindle. And in this case, the spindle lock is very useful for when I need to tighten the drawbar that holds the collet chuck in place. This collet chuck has a number three Morse taper that fits into a socket in the spindle nose, which has a matching Morse taper number three socket. And using a spindle lock is a better idea than putting a spanner on the chuck itself. Another spanner in the vicinity of the lathe would be a pain. This is a plain turning job, and it's fairly obvious by the images on screen what I've been doing. I'm using the file to remove the sharp edges. I've reduced the outside diameter of this piece of metal, I've removed the threads from each end, and now I need to bore the centre to fit on the lathe spindle. This boring tool is quite amazing. I don't think I've ever changed the tip on it. It's an almost indestructible tip. Well, so far. Watch me break it in this video. Once or twice in the history of this tip, I have cleaned it up a little bit using my green grit or silicon carbide grinding wheel. It's going to be quite a long day today. I got up at five o'clock this morning, a quick cup of tea and straight into the video editing. This video footage is some that I shot yesterday when I was actually doing the job that you see me doing. All the clips have been edited into a sequential order, which tells the story of how to make a spindle nose protector and now it's 16 minutes past seven. I'm sat here doing the voiceover into a microphone. I never use a script. I just make it up as I go along. I watch the pictures and try and describe what I see, but occasionally I speak about other things. I think that's the boring operation coming to an end. And here I'm removing the part from the chuck to try it in position. And it's just slightly too tight. So it's back in the chuck for a bit more trimming off. Generally, before I start the morning's work, I have a quick look at the comments, because I always need a good laugh. The first thing I do is delete the idiot comments, and believe me, I get a lot of those. And then I have a look at ones that are worth replying to. One chap this morning was complaining that my videos are too short. So I replied to him and said, well, I look at the statistics on the channel, which tells me that the average viewing time is about five and a half minutes. And that's why I make the videos no longer than about seven or eight minutes normally. Videos like this, if they're too long, are just totally boring. What I would like to say to this viewer and others that make similar comments is, well, I'm really sorry about this, but I would recommend that if you think my videos are too short, try making one. For instance, this is a six minute video and the time required to make this video, including doing the job, is about four and a half hours. And I try and make one of these tutorial videos every day. In this clip, I'm doing a test fit of the spindle nose protector on the spindle nose, and it's a perfect fit. An absolute perfect fit on the O-rings. Now it's time to fit the collet chuck, 
and have a look at it. Yes, that's pretty good. I like the look of that. This is the ball race tightening ring that I bought, and it's definitely a lot better for holding the collets. I bought it from RDG Tools, and I thank the viewer who recommended buying one. It's much smoother than the normal type. Here I'm applying some lubricating oil to the threads, and here I'm fitting a collet to the chuck. It's not a good idea to tighten the collets in place until you put a piece of metal in the collet. So why am I going to this trouble? What is wrong with the three-jaw chuck? Nothing is wrong with the three-jaw chuck. But holding working collets is much more accurate. I've just been using the special spanner to tighten the collet ring. This is a spindle lock button that I mentioned earlier. It engages with a hole in the spindle and holds it solid, allowing for easy removal and fitting of tooling to the spindle nose. The material I'm currently turning in the collet chuck is a piece of silver steel, and silver steel is accurately ground to the correct size. So if you fit it into a collet and reduce part of the diameter, it will be perfectly concentric with the outside diameter. By using the special spanner with the spindle lock engaged, it's a really simple job to slacken off the collet and remove the work. And that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.